Antarctica, the final frontier on Earth, the exiled continent left forever undisturbed until that is the end of the Second World War. With Germany and Japan distracted by their new possessions, a non-existent British Empire and a weakened America, Argentina and Chile, two regional powers, began their scramble for the last tranquility on Earth. It is not surprising that soon enough, the two parties engaged in skirmishes and escalating confrontations. In February 1952, Chilean surveyors, exploring the possibility of Antarctic resources, were fired upon by Argentinian soldiers, resulting in several deaths. The nations were on the brink of war. This escalation brought Antarctica to the attention of the international community. The newly formed Organization of Free Nations called for peace, backing Chile's claim, while the Greater German Reich issued public support for Argentina. As the two Latin American powers sat for talks, Germany took this opportunity to seize their claim of New Swabia. Similarly, Japan also moved to capture Mary Birdland without any legitimate claims. As the major powers scrambled for Antarctica, the OFN, spearheaded by a reinvigorated United States, led her allies into the frozen ice sheets of Antarctica. It was dubbed Operation Deep Freeze. However, the initiatives made by the OFN did not result in peace. When on the 9th of June, 1958, an Argentine destroyer fired upon a recently constructed Chilean lighthouse located on the islet of Snipe. This act, known as the Snipe Incident, precipitated the first war in Antarctica. In the subsequent months, Argentinian troops and naval assets engaged in a violent armed conflict, seizing Chilean holdings in Antarctica. This incident temporarily settled the ever-changing borders on the southern continent. Other interlopers on the continent did not fare well either. German efforts experimenting with colonization in New Swabia were unsuccessful. The West Russian war and economic malaise lessened the Reich's focus on the frozen land. As supply shipments worsened, riots, starvation, and eventually death became common. The attempt at colonization had failed, and remaining survivors were evacuated to the African Reich's commissariats. This would not be the end of German presence on the continent, however, as the administration was transferred under military jurisdiction. The OFN Antarctic Administration is jointly run and operated by an international effort primarily comprising personnel from America, Australia, New Zealand and Canada. The administration, headquartered at McMurdo Station, is driven by the pursuit of science and the resolute moral need to defend the legal claims of the OFN from Nazism and imperialism. Their neighbors in the Japanese claim eke out a squalid existence on their ill-gotten gains. Little is known about their operations on the continent, save for the fleets of whalers and fishing vessels spotted sailing south. The inauguration of Alessandri as the new Chilean president brought significant changes in the nation's Antarctic policy. Gone are the days of massive funding and involvement. A shoestring budget and a flailing diplomatic effort to obtain international recognition for Chilean Antarctic claims is all that preoccupies them now. Their Argentine foe has not been idle, reinforcing the holdings seized during the Snipe incident and pursuing dreams of further polar exploration and conquest. A final decisive confrontation between the South American neighbors seems inevitable. Indeed, in the race for influence between the world powers, even the last frontier on Earth would not be undisturbed. Antarctica, like so much of our world, has become another field of human conflict. The Cold War grows colder. Produced by the U.S. Department of Defense, in collaboration with the governments of Australia, New Zealand, and Canada.